For quite some time now, one of my most recommended headphone amplifiers at the premium level of this hobby has been the Burson Solowus 3X GT. There is also the 3GT, which I've reviewed. That's the single-ended version compared to the balanced version. I'll talk about that more soon. But either way, both of these are fantastic choices if you're looking for a premium headphone amplifier, or at least they were. What Burson have now managed to do is come out with an even better version of the Burson Solowus 3X GT and 3GT, and so I'm here today to tell you if it's worth the upgrade, if you should now think even more about buying one of these, or if nothing's really changed and it's about the same as the original. For those not already familiar with the Soloist GT range, just a really quick summary of what we've got here. If you want to know more detail, check out the link down below through to the Burston website for all the specifications and details you might need. But to get you up to speed with everything that you absolutely need to know for the rest of this review to make sense, what we've got in the Soloist 3 GT, which is the single-ended version, that's this one, and the 3 X GT, which is the balanced version, that's this one, and you can tell them apart by kind of the rose gold or copper colour versus the red colour on the various accents, the key things you need to know about these is that regardless of which one you choose, they're 2,499 US dollars for either of them. They'll put out 10 watts per channel. From memory, that's into a 32 ohm load. I can't remember exactly, but the key point is they've got buckets and buckets of power. You could argue actually too much power, but the good news is they've got three gain modes, low, medium, and high to really well control that power. And that means that you can actually get away with using these with IEMs or more sensitive headphones with no problems at all. The other things to know about them is that depending on which version you get, the single-ended or the balanced, you've got multiple inputs. One of the benefits of the balanced version is it gives you both two pairs of XLR inputs and two pairs of RCA inputs, whereas in the case of the single-ended, you are only getting two pairs of RCAs. They also have preamp outputs and even a subwoofer output. On top of that, you can run them if you're using something like ear speakers, such as the RAL or MySphere headphones slash ear speakers. You can also run these in headphone and subwoofer mode as well. So there's lots of different versatility available in these. If you want more of a rundown of how I found all those features to work in my day-to-day -day use, how the crossfeed circuit works, because these have crossfeed as well, if you want to hear more about that, then maybe go and check out my original Solowus 3X GT review. I covered all of that in there in lots and lots of detail. Because I want to spend more time today talking about the differences between the 3GT and the 3XGT, also the original 3XGT and the new version, and then also an upgrade to the power supplies that you can put into these to make them even better. So we've got plenty to cover just in talking about the new versus the original 3XGT, and also 3GT of course, and so I want to dive in and start talking about it there. Probably the first thing we should talk about is what makes the original Soloist and the new Soloist, the 2023 version, different from one another. And it all comes down to the fact that there's new power management going on in the new version. I've cracked the lid open on the 3GT here, so let me take this lid off and I'll show you what's going on inside. Under the cover of the 3GT here, and by the way, this will be pretty much the same for the 3XGT, the part that I'm going to talk about at least. What you'll see on the inside of the 3XGT and the 3GT, if you get one of the new versions is that in addition to the op amps which have always been in here, these are Burson's own V6 Vivid op amps, they're a discrete op amp making this a fully discrete headphone amplifier and preamp for that matter. In addition to that, you'll also notice that on each side there's these other sort of grey anodized little modules, and these are the new silent power modules from Burson. The idea of these modules is that they're going to improve the way the power is managed and therefore noise levels in the power, and this is already an upgrade from the original GT range, the Soloist GT range I should say. 
So straight away, in theory, going from the original Solaris GTs up to these should provide some improvements. And I'll share shortly a comparison between the original and the new version to tell you what you should expect. In addition to having these new power supply modules, what it also means is that they're now removable, just like the op amps. And so the other thing you can do is you can buy upgrade power supply modules. Now at present, we've only got the two options. These are the SP1 or Silent Power 1. You can then also buy or will be able to buy soon the Silent Power 2 modules. I believe they'll retail for about 300 US dollars. And that will take theoretically another step in terms of power supply control and reduced noise through the power and therefore better sound. Now, if you've already watched my review of the Timekeeper GT, you'll know that I'm really impressed with what these do. But if you haven't seen that one, stick around because I will tell you more about how these perform in the headphone amps as opposed to the Timekeeper monoblock speaker amps. Before I get ahead of myself though and start talking about the Silent Power 2 modules, we probably should talk about just how the Silent Power 1 modules fare against the original Soloist. Now for the sake of ease, I'm going to start saying Soloist across the board, but do know I'm not referring to the Soloist 3 XP, that's the lower level units, I'm only talking about the Soloist GT. They're the only ones, as far as I'm aware, that will use the Silent Power modules for now. And so just to clarify, the only difference that you're going to be able to find between the original and the upgraded 2023 version Soloists is the fact that they've got those Silent Power modules on the inside. That does translate, if I'm correct, to the model number on the back. The back of the Soloist 3 GT that I've got here, this is a new one, is an R121 model. The back of the original 3X GT, which is this one, this has got 120X on the back. So I'm assuming that the original GTs are going to be 120 series, either 120 or 120X, depending on whether it's the single-ended or the balanced version. And then you're going to go to the 121 and the 121X, I believe, for the new versions with the Silent Power modules. And so because everything else stays the same, there's no change to the connections, the inputs, the outputs. There's no change to the key features in the devices. The really big question when it comes to the OG versus the new Solaris GTs is what's the difference in sound? So let's jump straight into that. For this comparison, I put the original 3X GT up against the new 3X GT, which is currently over the back there driving my timekeepers as my preamp and headphone amp. But for this testing, I had both of these running side by side, running from the same source, which was the Cord Hugo TT2. One of the nice things about the TT2 is I could run the XLR into one of these, the RCA into the other, and you're getting exactly the same volume and exactly the same performance. And listening to Old Man by John Butler Trio as one of the tracks that I listened to, the key thing that stood out to me was that there was a clear difference, but a fairly subtle difference going between them. It's a nice upgrade, but not one that I would jump up and down about initially. There's clearly a sense of greater separation and clarity from the new GT, and that does make the older version sound a little bit thicker overall, a little bit less separated you could say, and that is impressive because I'd always felt like the original GT was already doing a great job. So to hear the new one get a step better is excellent, but at the same time, as I said before, I don't want to sit here and suggest that it's some massive leap. It's a clear, significant and obvious improvement, but if you were to ask me if it's worth selling off the old GT to get the new one, Depending on how much of a loss you're going to take making that changeover, I would question the maths there. One thing that is worth noting is that the new GT, because it is a bit less thick, it's a little bit more separating. As a result, it actually sounds a little bit leaner. I don't think the tonality has actually technically changed, so much as the fact that everything's got more space around it, everything's a bit less thick, it's probably got a little bit less background noise in the sound, and we're probably talking inaudible noise in the sense that you couldn't listen to it and say, I can hear noise but when you remove it, it does change the overall presentation of the music. While I was listening to Old Man by the John Butler Trio, one of the things that I did notice was that in the busy sections of this track, it was much easier to separate John's vocals from the rest of the music. There's quite a lot going on, and the newer GT definitely helped me really isolate his vocal and what he was saying in the lyrics compared to the original GT. Another thing that I noticed was that the new version GT also had the cymbals in this track a bit crisper, and it wasn't entirely good, I didn't necessarily prefer it from the new GT, but having said that, it was probably the truth of what was in the mix. I don't recall, and I didn't take a note of which headphones I was using, it was probably the Mesa Elites, the ZMF Calderas, or the Hyferman HE1000SE, I don't recall, but whichever one it was, the cymbals were less enjoyable from the new GT, and as I said, it's probably more of a reflection of what the truth of the recording is, and less so the fact that the new GT is doing anything bad at the treble. Based on all of my listening, it's not adding anything to the mix, it's actually more transparent than the original. 
The kick drum used throughout this track had a great sense of impact from both amplifiers, but it was noticeably cleaner from the new GT. And what I mean by cleaner is I feel like I could hear kind of the start and the finish of the kick drum a bit better. There was maybe a little bit of a sense of texture in it as well that I wasn't getting as much from the original GT. And so these are all the subtle cues that if you jump quickly back and forth between them, you may not notice, but as you take your time between them, it's very clear and very definite, but it is a small step only. Hopefully I'm making that clear. Ultimately, what I would say is that the new version GTs take exactly what the old one did, do it all the same, but cleaner. And that cleaner means more separation, more sense of transparency, and also a little bit more sense of leanness to the sound at times. Again, it's not like these are tonally altering the music, it's just that the more noise you take away, the clearer you can hear what's going on, and the less kind of fullness is added from any kind of noise. So I do think the new version GT is a clear step up, I think it's a nice step up, but I do also think it's a modest step up. This is not completely redefining the space, but it's clearly a better amplifier. For those of you that then might be considering an upgrade or your first ever purchase of a Solowest GT, if you are looking at maybe getting one of the new GTs and you're starting to wonder, should you get the 3 GT or the 3 XGT? I have covered this off before in a lot of detail in a previous review, so do go and check that one out if you're interested. But to give you a quick summary of what you're going to hear between the two, I find that with the 3 GT, because it's using the 6.3mm connector, which has a shared ground, what that tends to do is sort of bring the sound into more of a central focus. It gives a bit more depth to the sound stage, a little bit less width to the sound stage. And the nice thing is that if you do buy yourself a 3X GT, going to the 6.3mm connector and comparing the new 3X GT with the new 3 GT, and sorry about all these terms, it's getting confusing, but if you pretend for a moment that this is the new version 3X GT, then what I'm saying is if I connect into the 6.3mm socket on this one and compare it to the 6.3mm sockets on this one, what I end up hearing is almost identical, because they're both using that shared common ground. You could argue that there's just a tiny bit more transparency from the 3 GT. It's a dedicated design in this circuit for the single-ended output. Whereas in the case of the 3X GT, it's been designed as a balanced headphone amp that's then adapted down to the single-ended. It is worth noting that if you're using the 6.3mm connection from the 3X GT, you are getting half the power. But going from 10 watts down to 5 watts, there's still plenty on tap. You will never run out of power with a 3X GT or a 3 GT. If though you're in a situation where you specifically want to run your headphones with a balanced connection, or maybe you value the extra connectivity that the 3X GT gives you with the XLR and the RCA inputs giving you a total of four inputs, then if that's you, what you'll get if you go to the 3X GT is you'll also get the ability to plug into the XLR or the 6.3mm, and that gives you a slightly different flavour of sound. Going to the XLRs gives you a bit more separation of sound, a bit of a wider sound stage with a tiny bit less depth. It also changes the tonality just a little tiny bit, making it sound a little bit leaner, a little bit more clinical, or a bit more neutral, some might say. But honestly, I really like both the 6.3 and the XLR output, and therefore also like the 3GT or the 3XGT. They all sound great, and there's no way to say what is the correct sound. They're all really good. They're just a little bit different between the single-ended and the balanced connectors. And so I wouldn't get too hung up on that, and for that matter, I probably would just say go for the 3XGT because then you're getting more input connections, you're also getting both output types that you can choose what you want and when you want. So for me, the 3XGT is the one that I go for the most, but I do like the 3GT for what it offers if you're a single ended only person. And so at this point, hopefully what you're taking away from this review so far is that the new versions of the 3X and 3GT are a nice step up from the originals, but they're not transformative. They're not suddenly, as I said before, they're not suddenly redefining what a headphone amp should sound like at this price point. They're just a nice step up at the price point. What that means is that they continue to be what I believe is one of the better options on the market. Not the best, but one of the better options on the market at around this sort of two to two and a half thousand US dollar mark. But that's all based on the SP1 modules. And that's where things start to change the moment we factor in the SP2. For approximately $300 US more, you can buy a set of four of these little chips, or actually they're little circuit boards, there's multiple chips in these, and then you can upgrade from the SP1 that comes with the GTs up to the SP2. And this for me is the reason that you might consider upgrading from the original Solowest GTs up to one of the 2023 versions. Or if you've been on the fence, this is the reason that now I would say get off the fence and grab yourself one of these. 
And that's because the transformation from the SP1 version to the SP2 version is nothing short of exceptional. For the extra $300 spent here, you're jumping yourself from what I would call an appropriately priced headphone amp at about that $2,500 mark. I think it performs alongside others at the same price. But the moment you put this in for $300, US you're really jumping up a whole nother tier. In my opinion, you're getting way more than $300 US worth of value the moment you upgrade these SP2 modules. To put this to the test, I did some listening with the 3XGT with the SP1 modules, then flipped over to the SP2 modules and took another listen to the same track. The track I happened to use for my critical listening notes was Freddy Freeloader by Miles Davis. And starting off in the SP1 version, everything sounded fantastic. It really didn't leave me wanting more. It didn't have me sitting there thinking, if only there was more clarity, more separation. It just sounded great. When I moved over to the SP2 modules though, what I found was I started hearing things in the mix very easily that weren't as obvious before. They were still there, it was all still being very clearly delivered by the SP1s, but the SP2 just made all this detail more available. It didn't force it in my face, it doesn't change the character of the amplifier overall, and indeed I'd say much in the same way that going from the original 3XGT to the upgraded 3XGT with the SP1 modules, going to the SP2 is the same again. It doesn't change the character of the amp, it just improves everything it's doing. And in doing so, what I heard as I listened to Freddy Freeloader was all this detail was now available to me. I could better hear things like the texture of the air flowing through the trumpet and through the saxophone and its reed and the sounds of the, of the keys of the saxophone clicking. All those things became more available and more evident once I went to the SP2s. The cymbals in this track had a lovely sense of shimmer that only got better with the SP2 modules. And the bass had great weight and impact, regardless of which module, but it got clearer. And once again, that better sense of texture and control in the bass once the SP2 modules were installed. Finally, one of the key tests for me is always a piano. And the piano just sounded natural. It had a great sense of attack on the notes when things were a bit more aggressive in the music. But also that wonderful sense of resonance and harmonics that you expect from a piano. And so again, what I'd say is that... I just find that going from the original GTs, Soloist GTs, to the new version GTs with the SP1 module, and then going to the SP2, in each time, what you're doing is you're just improving everything that's already there. And as I said before, that's the reason for me that the new version Soloist GTs are definitely worth considering whether you're an original GT owner or you're someone that's now looking to play in that kind of $2,500 US dollar space for headphone amps. With the SP1 version, I think it really cements these as one of the best options around. And then when you go to the SP2 version, as I've already said, it takes them to another tier. Now, I don't have direct comparisons to share with you right now because I haven't done the detailed listening notes yet. But what I'll tell you by way of a bit of a teaser is that here on my desk now, I've got the Sengrand Silver Fox headphone amplifier. I've also got the Enlium Amp 23R here, which is a headphone amp and speaker amp that I've reviewed before. This is a premium $6,000 US dollar headphone and speaker amp. And what I can tell you right now is that comparing the SP2 upgraded soloists with both of those, and by the way, the Sengrand Silver Fox, I think retails for about $4,000 US dollars. Comparing the $2,500 or let's say $2,800 US dollar Soloist GTs with the SP2 modules installed, comparing those to $4,000 and $6,000 US dollar headphone amps, what I'm finding is that the SP2 upgraded Soloists absolutely go toe to toe with those other amplifiers. Whether or not they're better is going to be a difficult thing to say because I think there's going to be preferential differences between the sound. But the fact that they're going toe to toe with headphone amps worth about a thousand and about three thousand dollars more than the Soloist GT, that to me is something special. And that to me is what makes the new version Soloist an absolutely fascinating opportunity. So hopefully that's painted you a bit of a picture of these new upgraded versions of the Soloists. If you're not already familiar with the Soloist range, as I said before, do check out my older reviews. They're maybe not quite as well produced as these, but hopefully the content gives you everything you need to know. And also there are links down below through to Burson, so you can go and read up on these as well. But suffice to say for me, I think the new version Soloist GTs, particularly with the upgraded power supply modules, are nothing short of spectacular. It's taken what was already my favourite headphone amp at the price, made it better, and then made it better again. And so I hope I've answered any questions that you had about these new versions of these amplifiers. If I did miss anything that you wanted me to cover off here, do drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer you. But hopefully you've found this video useful, informative, and helpful already. If you have, I'd love it if you hit the like button. And please subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. 
But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. (laughs) 